Well, there is another round of stimulus talks that are at least appearing to be in a stalemate. The fate of those relief checks now in serious jeopardy. Will struggling Americans get the help that they need? Well, we have our panelists standing by, Joe and Victoria. They are standing by. Also, Melissa Armo, CEO and founder of The Stock Swoosh. Okay, good to see everyone here. Um, Democrats, they, they appear to be sort of walking back this promise for $2,000 checks. The Democratic National Committee tweeted out over the weekend that the Biden administration will, quote, build on the $600 checks that were already approved and that Americans should, who qualify should expect an additional $1,400. And um, now, of course, people are saying, wait a second, $2,000, that's, uh, that's not $1,400. So, Melissa, tell me about this divide that we're seeing, because we are hearing voices in the Democrat Party, Bernie Sanders being one of them, who are saying $1,400 is not $2,000. Well, first of all, you know, here in New York, $2,000 doesn't even cover people's rent. So it's very interesting because Democrats want to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. They want to give stimulus tax checks a $2,000. Andrew Yang is running for mayor of New York and he wants to have a universal income. I have to be honest with you, none of these things are sufficient for New Yorkers. What New Yorkers need is to go back to work. And I think most people across the country really need to go back to work. The only way that we're going to get out of this situation economically is for people to work and they can take the necessary steps in order to protect themselves to go back to, to work. Here in New York City, the city is just, uh, it's just so sad when you go out. When you walk down a New York City street block, even one block, if there's 10 businesses, eight are closed and two are open, we can't survive like this. And $2,000 stimulus checks aren't going to cut it. Um, Joe, you know, we, we've heard from the governor that he plans to reopen indoor dining 25% on February 14th. So that's still two weeks <laughs> away. It's only 25%. And you know the size of a New York City restaurant. Uh, there's not a lot of space to divide uh, for only a quarter of, of, of tables available. So it makes you wonder, are these restaurants, do they have the support that they need? And what do you make of the timing as well that Governor Cuomo is signing off on this two-week time frame when you can finally reopen? Is coronavirus changing in that time? Well, th this was all a political stunt by Cuomo and the Democratic governors around the country to hurt Donald Trump and to harm him during the election, and they succeeded. Uh, the, the object now is to try and reopen these restaurants, but it may be too late. Uh, bringing restaurants back after with 25 percent capacity is nonsensical. Uh, these restrictions by the governor are ridiculous. They're dangerous. Uh, I don't know that uh, New York's ever going to be able to recover from the Cuomo leader uh, years. I mean, he's going to go for a fourth term. And if he gets reelected, then the people of New York had decided that uh, suicide isn't dangerous. Mm. I feel for, um, you know, the, these businesses that, that are still sort of yes. waiting for this relief. You think about yes. the, these, um, you know, small, some minority owned businesses as well. This is an American dream that has now been crushed based on leadership. And Victoria, you know that, and we've spoken before about how Governor Cuomo wants bailout money. He wants, he wants, you know, federal funding to help out these situations. And yet he's the one who's making the call on the future of these businesses. Yeah, it, isn't it a shame he's not term limited, but the, the people in New York don't seem to be able to judge what is in their best interest. You know, Emma, it's really amazing that on Valentine's Day, which is when they say that the restaurants can open at 25 percent, that's going to be a magic day. Who knew that the virus was going to be just <laughs> subsided enough on Valentine's Day that people can open up at 25 percent? It's it's just a shame. And uh, and there's nothing right now that Republicans can do about it because they're not in control and they're not in control of the state legislature either in New York. Sometimes I wonder if these elected officials have really spoken with their constituents to listen to hear what they need from them right now, those who are there representing. So, Melissa, I'll ask you, have you spoken with clients? What are they telling you? Uh, what could be a solution that they think would help? I'm having trouble hearing you, but I think I know the topic of the conversation, so I'm just going to address it head on. Right now in New York City, we have had a failed leadership failed leadership on the local level with Mayor de Blasio, failed leadership on the state level uh, with Governor Cuomo. And here's the thing. 
uh, Governor Cuomo can't even admit that there were mistakes made. Just come right out and say, we made mistakes. I think people would respect him a lot more if he just came right out and said, you know what? I made a mistake. We made a mistake a year ago. We made a mistake when we sent uh, COVID patients back to the nursing homes. People would respect him a lot more if he came out and, made, and, just, and just said, you know what? We made a mistake. Instead, he cannot do it. And I think the problem here, if you live in New York, it has become so partisan. COVID has become partisan. That it, it, whether you live in New York, whether you're Republican, whether you're a Democrat, you care about this city. You care about what's happening to people. They're losing their jobs. People can't pay their rent. They pushed off the rent moratorium until May 1st. I don't think that's going to be enough. The vaccine rollout has been a complete debacle from, from the city and the state level. And I'll tell you right now, at the end of the day, people, this city, this city is not yeah. going to come back until regular people go back to work. From the little guy on up to the big guy, New York City is so interconnected. Say you have a business person, they go out to lunch. Yeah. Where are they buying lunch? They're buying lunch at a restaurant. Where are they buying a newspaper across the street? All of these businesses have been hurt because people aren't working in the city. Yeah, and this has become a very New York-centric topic, but I think we understand how it can apply to all of the states that have been suffering during this time. Melissa Armo joining us live. Thank you. And our panelists stick around.